We're celebrating 400 episodes of the podcast today, and we're really happy that you're here with us. Where have we been? Where are we now? And where are we going in the future? We'll help you revise some verb tenses today as we talk about podcasts past, podcasts present, and podcasts in the future. Welcome to the 400th episode of Aprender Inglés with Reza and Craig. Hello, and if you're a new listener to the podcast, you're very, very welcome. My name's Craig. And my name's Reza. And with nearly 50 years of teaching English between us and 400 podcasts, we'll help you to improve your English and take it to the next level. Happy podcast birthday, Reza. Happy birthday to you too, Craig. How are you? Fine, fine. Do you feel any older? I do feel older, but I don't think that's got much to do with the podcast. I'm just feeling older. <laughs> I feel older and wiser. That's the good side of feeling older. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. I mean, life's a journey and we learn every day. And that's one reason we, we like doing this podcast. Craig, I believe we have a rather special and unusual announcement to make. Yes, we do. We have received a pledge. A pledge is a promise, a strong promise of a hundred euros or up to a hundred euros from an anonymous donor. A donor is a person who gives something. An anonymous donor and a fan of the show. So this person is an alcoholic, but this person wants to remain nameless. So I cannot say who it is. But for every voice message or email from you, the listener, who forgets to say to with listening to, we lose five euros from that 100 euros. And every person that remembers to say to, when you use the verb listen, we get five euros back. And at the end of the year, at the end of 2022, we can spend the money we have, if we have any, on a meal. So we can use that money to have a, um, a meal. So are we going to have a super fancy, fantastic restaurant meal at 50 euros per person for Reza and I? Or are we going to have maybe five or 10 euros left and we need to go to McDonald's to have a hamburger? That depends on you. So when you send us messages, voice messages or email messages in the future during this year, remember that every time you correctly use the preposition to, we don't lose any money. We keep that 100 euros. But every time you make a mistake, we get five euros deducted and taken away from that total. What do you think is going to happen, Reza? Will we get to December and have 100 euros or will it be less? I am going to be optimistic. I have a feeling we'll be eating in a really fancy restaurant by the end of the year. What do you think? I think so too. I trust you, the listener, to be accurate with your prepositions. So remember that when you're going to send us messages this year and we will be reminding you in future episodes about this special announcement. And thank you very much to our anonymous donor who has donated a hundred euros and put it on the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, this episode, because it's a special 400th episode of the podcast, we're going to look at some verb tenses in the format of past, present and future of the podcast. But before we do that, we're going to sing a little song, very, very short, and we want you to identify how many verb tenses you can hear in this song, okay? How many verb tenses can you identify in this very, very short song? Okay, Reza, take it away. When we podcast, yeah, we know we're going to be, we're going to be the guys who are podcasting for you. And when you're speaking... And sending messages to us, we know your English is much better than before. 
Because we have done 400 shows and we will do 400 more just to be the English podcasters for you, the students we adore. <laughs> okay, how many verb tenses did you notice? And did you recognize the tune, by the way? Yeah, the song is by the Proclaimers. If you're interested, it's on YouTube with the lyrics. It's called I'm Gonna Be, and 500 miles in brackets. I'm Gonna Be 500 miles by the Proclaimers. We've slightly changed the words. But we did um, use a lot of verb tenses in that song. How many did you notice? How many verb tenses did we use there? If you want to see the words, you can go to englishpodcast.com to read the words. And remember, these verb tenses, we're not going to go into a lot of detail because we've done podcasts in the past about these tenses. So just go to the website, englishpodcast.com, and in the search box, search for the verb tenses and you'll find podcasts explaining them in detail. So the verb tenses that you could use in the search box, for example, put in the search box present simple and you'll go to an episode or maybe more than one episode with us explaining the present simple. Craig, can you give us an example of a present simple that we used in that song? The very first thing that you sang, you sang when we podcast, when we podcast, using podcast as a verb. We said gonna but really, as I'm sure most of you know, what we really are saying is going to. But in pop music and in real life as well, actually, going to often comes out as the sound gonna. Because we're all lazy at heart. And it's easier to say gonna than going to. And in pop songs, whenever they write the lyrics, they usually write gonna, G-O-N-N-A. But really, it's going to. And we said, we're going to be. We're going to be the guys who are podcasting. We're going to be. We're going to be in the future. Going to in the future. And we are going to be the guys who are podcasting for you. There's the present continuous tense. Who are podcasting for you. We can use the present continuous to talk about things that are happening now. At the moment, we're speaking, we're podcasting. At the moment, now we are recording this podcast. But we, we use it very often to speak about the future. So the present continuous is very common to speak about future plans and arrangements. As we mentioned at the beginning of this episode, this is the 400th episode. Now, uh, hopefully, people will be listening to this in, in the future. We will have done five, six hundred, a thousand, who knows? But right now, this is number 400. So, from the past up to now, we have done 400 shows. That's a lot of shows, isn't it? I'm using there the present perfect because, as I said, it's from the past up to now. And we use the present perfect for that because we have done 400 shows we have done present perfect and as a as a side note to that we can also go to the future and use the future perfect to speak in a very similar way but not from the past until now but from now until the future so if there are 52 weeks in a year if we've done 400 episodes now in january 2022 in one year we will have done 452. So I'm projecting from now into the future using a perfect tense and saying this time next year, we will have done 452 podcasts. You're Hopefully. saying that's how many will be finished. They'll mm -hmm. already be finished at that time in the future. They will have been finished. Exactly. And speaking of the future, we also use the future simple in that little song. We will do 400 more. That's will. So the simple use of will, will the auxiliary verb used to speak about the future. And it's kind of a promise, isn't it? It's kind of a promise or maybe a prediction. What will happen in the future? I'm predicting. I'm promising that we will do 400 more. 
So as you can see, just from those few lyrics, the lyrics are the words of a song, we've been able to talk about quite a few different tenses. So listeners, I suggest you use the search box on the website and come up with different episodes where we've talked about all these tenses and learn something new or revise. Always a good idea to revise what you already know. So let's look at uh, specifically past, present and future tenses. Beginning with the past, we speak about the past and we tell stories. When we do that, we use the past perfect, the past simple, the past continuous and present perfect tenses. So we mix all of those together when we're speaking about the past. Let's think of an example, Reza. Can you can you think of an example where we'd use the past simple? Well, let's go right back to the start when it all began. We started podcasting together in September 2013. Do you remember our first episode? I didn't, so I went back and listened to it. Do you remember it? I think it was a kind of mixture of things, wasn't it? It was. Let's have a quick listen to remind ourselves what that sounded like. Hola y bienvenido a aprender inglés con Reza y Craig. Hello, Reza. Hi, Craig. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. I think first we should introduce ourselves. Good idea. So, um, my name's Craig and I'm an English teacher here at the British Council in Valencia. And I'm originally from London. And my name's Reza. I also live in Valencia and work at the British Council. And I come from Belfast. So let's begin with our first spot, which is Grammar Focus. Razor, over to you. So very different. No introduction, just the music. And we sounded pretty bad from an audio quality perspective. So that's improved a lot, I'm happy to say. Yeah, I agree. I think we've got much better since then. I mean, it wasn't bad. There's there are worse podcasts out there, yep. but you can tell that we we were new then. You can you can see that we had still room for improvement. Oh yes, and I sounded a bit nervous and not very natural, but interesting to go back and and see how far we've come. So when Reza gave you that example sentence, we started podcasting together in September 2013 with the past simple, did you notice the time reference? When you use the past simple tense, you very often use a time reference to take you back to the time in the past that you're thinking about. September 2013. We started podcasting together in September 2013. By the way, let me clarify something which often confuses people. Why podcasting with ING? You might be thinking, hold on, is that not present continuous? Like in our example earlier, we are podcasting for you. No, it isn't. It's ING, but it isn't present continuous. It's ING for a different reason. After the verb start, you can have a verb in the ING form. So for example, yesterday I started preparing my speech. Tomorrow, I will start learning to cook. I'm talking about tomorrow. doesn't matter. The other one was past. Tomorrow, after start, you put an ing. Or actually, you can put an infinitive if you want as well, just to complicate matters further. You can say, we started to podcast. It would also be correct. So after the verb to start, the next verb can be ing. But do not confuse ing on its own, just podcasting with the present continuous we are podcasting they're not the same thing if you don't say we are if you just say podcasting that's gerund ing and it goes after certain verbs but if you say we are podcasting that's different that's the present continuous 
So that was an example of using the past simple tense to talk about something that happened in the past. But what happens if we want to go back before that point in the past, before September 2013? Because I had been podcasting before Reza and I launched Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. The verb to launch means to start doing something. You launch a business, you launch a podcast, you launch a product, for example. So I had been podcasting before we started podcasting together. That's the past perfect tense. I had been podcasting. To make a question, you also need had, of course. So Reza, had you ever been on a podcast before we started? No, no. I haven't. I had never been on a podcast before I participated in this podcast with Craig. I had neither been the podcaster nor the guest of any podcast before. Okay. Well, have you ever heard my first podcasts? Yes, I have. There's a present perfect. Have you heard or have you ever heard my first podcasts? And tell me, Reza, what did I sound like in 2008? You sounded really good. Very, very good. You sound even better now, but you also sounded good way back. Oh, we're talking about over 12, 13 years ago now. You sounded good as well. Well, thank you for the compliment. I don't agree with you. I think I sounded terrible. Let's think what you think, the listener. So what do you think I sounded like back in 2008? Hi, this is a Mansion Inglés podcast. Made for you by mansioningles.com. I'm going to Madrid this weekend. Would you mind looking after my cat? To look after is a phrasal verb. It means cuidarse or cuidar a alguien o algo. Listen. To look after. Would you mind looking after my cat? Listen and repeat. My cat. Looking after my cat. What did you think, Reza? That was too, do you still believe that it was good in the beginning? <laughs> I think I think your content is is good, but it sounds a bit weird. Craig, I've got to ask you. There was a, there was a sound. Is that music in the background? I tried to put music under my voice. Yeah, and it sounded like the audio was just bad, which it was. But it was made worse by me trying to put music underneath. But it sounds terrible. It's so horrible. I was basically reading the newsletter that we sent out and recording it. So it was a long time ago, and I had no idea that I was podcasting way back in 2008. So it was interesting to go back and find those old podcasts. But, oh, embarrassing. Very embarrassing. The background music definitely doesn't work for me. Even if it were good background music, which it wasn't, but even if it were good, it still wouldn't work. I'm not a fan of background music. Me neither. I think it's distracting. And another thing, this is going to sound really bad, and I want it to sound bad on purpose because I'm a bit funny that way. It's improved a lot since you got together with me. Now don't make don't 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 think, oh what a big headed no 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 You're you're right. It does, but not because of me. It could sound much better if you podcasted with somebody other than me. <laughs> I am a great believer in podcasts for learning languages anyway, for two people at least. I think individually recorded podcasts with just one person can be good but they're never going to be as good as two people. So it's not that I'm a fantastic podcaster or that I've got a great voice, quite the opposite. But I just think two people doing an English podcast is so much better than one, don't you think? I agree. And I want to thank you, Reza, for rescuing me and for rescuing the listeners from those early podcasts and for making this podcast a lot better. So thank you. 
Well, you you say rescuing, but I reckon uh, if you've got somebody better than me, we might have a lot more listeners right now. <laughs> no, we actually that's, do. <laughs> that's not true. That's not true at all. But we have podcasted many times together over the years. That's another example of the present perfect tense. We have podcasted many times together over the years. And I can also say we have podcast many times together over the years because you can use podcast as a regular verb and just add ed or as an irregular verb and just use podcast so we've podcasted or we've podcast many times together over the years Reza, can you think of another example with the present perfect yes what about this recently we've been receiving more and more feedback from listeners which is great, of course. We've been receiving, have been, plus ing, we have been receiving. That's also present perfect. But unlike the previous example, this is continuous. We've been receiving is present perfect continuous because it ends in ing. The previous one, we have podcast, or we have podcasted, is present perfect simple, no ing. And please keep on sending, continue sending your voice messages and your feedback because we love to hear from you. And it really does put petrol in our tank, which means it gives us motivation to create more podcasts. Another example, mixing those two verbs, present perfect simple, present perfect continuous. We've recorded 399 podcasts together since 2013. Present perfect simple. We've been podcasting for more than eight years. So why did I use present perfect simple and then present perfect continuous? Well, with the number 399, with individual things, when you're counting from the beginning in the past until now, you're probably going to use present perfect simple. We've recorded 399 podcasts. The team has played 26 games this year etc. But with the continuous, the focus is more on the action. In this case, the action of podcasting. We've been podcasting for more than eight years. Or I could say we've been podcasting since 2013. But it hasn't always been plain sailing, has it, Reza? Plain sailing, when you sail a boat on the sea, if it's plain sailing, it's very smooth, it's very nice, it's lovely and sunny, so everything's going well. But if it hasn't been plain sailing, that expression means there's been problems, it's been difficult at times, we've made mistakes, things have gone wrong. So it hasn't always been plain sailing. Here's a collection of outtakes and pieces of past podcasts that have been left out or we say left on the cutting room floor that we haven't included until now so you might think we're professional but really we're not yeah go for it <clears throat> let's get ready to podcast one two one two one two okay yep <clears throat> okay. yeah of course we haven't started yet have we? yep mm-hmm. yep yeah my brain's not working yet. I think I need another coffee. I'm ready to go. I Take really yourself. do not like the sound of my own voice. I'm ready to go. One, two, three, four. Let's go. <coughs> ready to go? Let's go. <coughs> ready to go? Let's go. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Apprender. Resi Craig. Aprender qué? Aprender qué? Hombre, ¿qué aprendemos? Aprender qué? Me olvido. ¿Qué aprendemos? Ah, claro. Reza, Aprender Inglés con Resi Craig now has a podcast. Now, I I got it that Craig is some time ago. I've heard a lot of R's in my time down in Devon. Tractor and that sort of thing. Down the tractor. 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 <laughs> tractor, that's it. How would you say in English, Craig? 
I can't. I'd say ha ha ha. Yes. We even translate laughter into English. Although the aficionado, aficionados, 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 aficionados. Episode 106 of Upbringing Here in Glaze called Rizzy Quake. Cultural input of the highest level in our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and there's falling, then rising. Why not? <laughs> 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 Greg, I've just bought a stuffed cat. All that meat and no potatoes just ain't right. <laughs> like green tomatoes. That was showing agreement, satisfaction, and contentment to Rages. To Rages? To Rage. <laughs> I've forgotten your name, mate. Can you use any of these idioms? <laughs> why did I say that? Ask me again. I don't know why, just my mouth froze. How can you govern a country with 246 types of cheese? Yeah. Uh, well, should we just drop it? I think we better drop, drop it. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Reza, those are some of the things that we we have said since we started podcasting, and not all of our mistakes make it into the podcast. Some are, some are cut out and removed. Yes, as you can hear, listeners, I've said some very silly things in my time. <laughs> I try not to, but I just can't help myself. I apologize. So, where are we now? Let's look at the present and what we're doing at the moment. You might be interested to know how many people are listening to the podcast. Well, we we go up and down, but um, on average, we have about 12,000 monthly downloads per episode, which means that when the podcast is released into the world on a Sunday, if you count 30 days from then, that podcast will be downloaded somewhere around 11 12,000 times except during the summer and over the Christmas and New Year period where it dips and goes down to about 10,000 so that's more or less where we are at the moment and how many all-time downloads have we had Reza since the very beginning back in 2013? Now Craig are my calculations right if I say I think it's over 11 million? Yep that's true at the moment so we're recording this in january 2022 so at the moment 11 million yeah wow that's a lot of downloads that's a lot of downloads and of course we owe our success to our listeners because without you we wouldn't be doing this podcast we do this podcast because you enjoy it and you learn from it and we know that because you tell us you send us feedback so thank you to you our success is because you're listening and of course, we're having fun, aren't we? Yes, we have fun every time we meet up. What will be the difference there between we're having fun and we have fun? Present simple and present continuous. Yes, so I said we have fun every time we meet up. So I'm talking about our repeated action. So three years ago, two months ago, right now, tomorrow, in a year, doesn't matter when, we have fun every time we meet up. So that's present simple because it's repeated or routine routine or habitual action we always have fun don't we when we get together and podcast and we're having fun at the moment so i can use it for now at this very second but i can also use it when i speak about around now around this time in general so we're having fun at the moment but not this particular second just in general around this this current time period so, Craig, where do we want to go now? What are we going to do in the future? Well, that's a good question. And, of course, we want to continue, but we really want to know what you, the listener, 
wants from us and where you would like us to go. For example, would you like us to have more guests on the show? We have had many guests in the past. Present perfect. We've had, we have had many guests in the past speaking about different aspects of English. What other questions or feedback could we ask the audience for, Reza, on the future shows? Well, a big question is always grammar. Some students, some learners like lots of grammar. Others are not so keen on grammar. Let's hear from you listeners. Let us know. Do you think we do about enough grammar? Would you like more grammar, less grammar? Send in a bit of feedback and we'll try and um, follow what the majority want. We've spoken quite a lot about pronunciation, but um, enough, in your opinion? Would you like more focus on pronunciation in the future? Let us know. We've done some episodes based on specific countries or specific topics. We're not sure if that's everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> to be your cup of tea means the type of thing you like. What do you think? Let us know. Do you want more country-focused and topic-focused episodes? And would you like us to focus more on topic-based vocabulary, vocabulary covering specific areas? Now, bear in mind, which means take into account, think about the fact that if the vocabulary is very, very specific, it's not going to be interesting for a wide range of people. So one thing is to speak about medicine in general, and another thing is to speak about a very specific speciality in medicine that only a few doctors do. That really wouldn't be appealing. It wouldn't be useful for most of the listeners. So if you do suggest a vocabulary-based episode, please try to make it a bit general and not very, very specific. Maybe you'd like more general expressions for everyday use. Things like how to excuse yourself if you bump into someone in the street or how to order a pizza. Is that the type of thing you want more of? Or would you rather it kept to specific topics? Or what about academic material? We could go more practical or we could go more academic. For example, you might be interested in writing a good essay because you study at university or college. That would be more academic. You might be interested in that type of English. Or there'll be other people who might simply want to know how to order things online. That would be more practical. So practical, academic, that's another division or two different perspectives we could look at. Or perhaps you would like more advice and tips about exams. If you're studying for a specific exam, we'd be happy to talk about that. For example, I've just finished creating a B2 first course for the Cambridge exam. I'm more than happy to speak about that. And Reza has years and years of experience, particularly at C1 and C2 level exams for Cambridge and also IELTS. So if you would like more content, more podcasts based around those kind of exams, then please let us know. Another very important question for you listeners, and it is for you, is would you like to hear more of your own feedback? Do you think we have enough listener feedback? Or, or would too you much. like to hear more? Or too much, maybe, yeah? Or would you like more or less? Please send in some feedback and let us know. But when you send your feedback, remember to say listen to, otherwise we, we lose five euros. And now it's your turn to practice your English. So please let us know what you think. Send us your feedback, your suggestions, your opinions. You can do that by voice message, which we prefer. Go to speakpipe, S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E -P -P -E dot com slash English podcast. Emails, Reza? If you want to write to us, email Craig at Craig at, at is arroba, by the way, Craig at inglespodcast.com or me, BelfastReza at gmail.com. If you're interested in paid courses to improve your English, particularly audio courses, you can find those at the online store for Mansion Inglés. Go to store, S-T-O-R-E dot dot net. And we'd like to thank all of our wonderful Patreon supporters who are 
supporting us for as little as $1.20 per month. That's including the VAT, the value added tax. And if you become a Patreon supporter, you get instant access to recent transcriptions of this podcast. Every word that Reza and I say. For more information, go to Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash English podcast. Reza, who are our lovely sponsors this month? So our most recent sponsors, not all, but only our most recent sponsors are Christian, Alberto, Valverde, Conde, and Mac Flo. Thank you to those guys who've recently joined us. But of course, we don't forget all of you who have already been sponsoring us for a while. A big thank you to all of you. Yes, thanks very much. On next week's episode, we'll be speaking about mistakes that candidates make in English exams and how you can do a better exam. So that's next week. Thank you so much for joining us on this special 400th episode. Until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. 